Let's print some really flexible NinjaFlex TPU on my Bamboo Labs A1 Mini and see if we can get rid of the stringing right here at Filament Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. NinjaFlex is a brand name for some very flexible TPU. I've used this before on the channel and I really like the way it prints. I have to load this onto A1 Mini, so I hit filament and then load. It takes me through the steps. I have to just push the filament all the way into the nozzle. It grabs it, it starts feeding it out. So this went really smooth. For me, this is the 3D Benchy of flexible printing, the flexible octopus. I loaded into Bamboo Studio and now I have to select my filament. So I went up to the filament list and just chose generic TPU. Then I click the edit button and you want to print slower but it does that through this max volumetric speed setting. It's automatically set for TPU, so I don't want to mess with it. So that's going to adjust the speeds. But the retraction, this is where I probably want to play with it. But let's go with this for now. I went back to the filament section just to verify the temperatures look good. Everything looks good, so I sliced it. And once I did, it said it would take one hour and seven minutes to print. And this is what it should look like as it prints. Everything looks good so far. So let's see how it looked on the printer. So overall this looks pretty good, but there is some stringing I can see. It doesn't look bad on the bed right here, but when I put the print on a black background, then you can really see the stringing. So I wanna see if I can get rid of this. And I'm gonna use my setup that I created in a previous video where I use an Ender 3, older Ender 3 board to drive an extruder with some custom Arduino code. And with that information, I could take a really stringy octopus and turn it into something that barely had stringing on an Ender 3 SE. With a push or release of a button, I could extrude or retract filament. And then I put a block at the end of a PTFE tubing and I pushed the filament into this thing to crush it or to compress it. And first I did some lengths where I stopped it, cut it, so I have a baseline to measure against. And then I ran it again, only this time driving as hard as I could, and then clipped it and compared the difference. And I saw a 7 millimeter compression on this filament. So that allowed me to change the retraction from 1 millimeter to 4 millimeters. And the 4 millimeters definitely made improvement. But then I finally went to that 7 millimeters that I had measured and I pretty much eliminated any stringing on this octopus. So at that point, I considered it a success. So I did the same to NinjaFlex. And I saw a very similar seven millimeters of compression with this filament. So I wanna apply that to the Bamboo Studio settings to see if it'll work. Now by default, it's set to 0.4 in the settings, which seems really low. So I just went to three millimeters rather than the full seven. And with that, it looked better, but I got a clogged nozzle not long into the print. And then I realized that four millimeter in my previous testing is similar to what I'm getting with 0.4. So it made me think, if 0.4 in Bamboo Lab Studio is the same as four millimeters in Cura for the under three, is 0.7 the same as seven millimeters? So I went back and just changed it to 0.7 and then printed it again. And look at the results. Hardly any stringing on this thing whatsoever. It looks really good all the way around. It's not zero stringing, but it's solid and it just looks really, really good. So here it is before with the 0.4 and here it is after with the 0.7. Definitely a lot better. Now, if you happen to be looking for professional TPU printing, PCBWay.com offers 3D printing and they do indeed do TPU. And they do it with an SLS machine, so far more accurate, better results, like this insert for a shoe that they show as an example. And there's other settings that you can choose, but you can upload your file and you can get a quote right from them. So check it out. And never forget that PCB Way is my favorite place to get circuit boards. 10 pieces for five bucks or assembly services for 29. That's come down, it used to be $30. With inflation, I can't believe something actually came down. So check out PCBWay.com. Now before I discovered the 0.7 retraction trick, I did print these gripper arms for this flexible gripper. And it's really cool because you turn the handle and the arms will come around something and grab it. You can make this into a robotic arm, but it's just fun to play with. And the A1 Mini printed these just fine, other than the stringing. It came out really good. 
Another thing I'm working on is my grandson's racetrack. He's got the Sizzler type track or the Hot Wheels track and it's kind of flexible. So I wanted to see if I could make my own tracks to connect like this. So what I did is I put it on a scanner and was able to reproduce at least a section of it just to test it. And again, I got a lot of stringing on this because this was before the 0.7. But it looks like I got the design right and it's fitting. So now I got to go back and try the 0.7 on this. I'll save this for a future video. Overall, I'd have to say I'm really impressed with how well this $199 Bamboo Lab A1 Mini prints TPU. I'm really happy with the results. I want to give a special shout out to all my Patreon supporters. Believe me, without you guys, I couldn't do this. So thank you. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.